Why? What's up guys? I'm about to go watch my friend Tom compete in his powerlifting meet. I've always been wanting to see, see it live. I've seen powerlifting meets on YouTube and stuff, but I feel like seeing it live is much more exciting, much more intense. So Tom total uh, 14 10 pounds and that qualifies him for the raw elite nationals which is very impressive I mean his deadlift alone is more than my total and then we had a diabetes screen as a whole class we went to a high school in Miami so different groups uh, we each had a different station here is a height station for measuring height I wasn't part of the group but um, I was just there for the picture Here's a section for determining their weight on a scale uh, to calculate BMI and then there is measuring the hip waist ratio and they go to get their blood sugar drawn and then I, I was part of the exit consultation station at the end when all their forms filled out and then we go through each form pick out red flags see if anything is off and then we would talk to them about it and if they needed further consultation and referral we would ask our faculty or the nurse there to help us out and now uh, we're gonna see a bunch of different clips from the past month basically there will be clips from Ryan's birthday weekend clips from when we go out and eat food because whenever we finish exams uh, we just go out and eat and that's how we really enjoy ourselves so Ryan's birthday was October 11th I believe uh, we went to eat brunch at Foxy Brown food was just Incredible. Yeah, I got the steak and eggs hash or something, and then of course, Manny showing us his sausage. And then Ryan also wanted to make lasagna really bad for his birthday, so he did that. I forgot when we got this, but we went to a hibachi place. It was it was pretty good, just a little bit oily. And then after the neuro exam, we went to eat Korean food at Gabos, and we all got bimbap on the hot stove. It was really good. You mix it up, and the rice gets crunchy at the bottom which is perfect. And we also went paintballing, which was a lot of fun, even though I play like a little girl and it was raining super hard. And now as for school, for MS2, we learned about everything about the elbow, the wrist, and the hand. Some common disorders include lateral medial epicondylalgia, and UCL sprain, LCL sprain, and uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, cubital tunnel syndrome, and just uh, finger deformities like swan neck, boutonniere. So depending on where the nerve is compressed and which nerve is compressed, you get different distributions of numbness and tingling. So I thought that was a little bit difficult just going through the differential diagnosis. Oh man, I, uh, that word just gives you nightmares. And for the practical, it was basically a whole treatment like a whole process. We started with the history, taking and figuring out the diagnosis. And we had to pick special tests to actually perform on the patient and to really justify your diagnosis. And then we were handed the, the sheet with our tests and measures. And we go through each one to pick out the impairments to figure out what treatment we're gonna do for each one. And we demonstrate a few of the treatments, progress, regress it. Overall, we're just moving really fast from the shoulder to the upper extremity. And now we're already on the hip, which I'll talk about next video. And as for PEDS 2, we had a big midterm over assessment tools, adaptive equipment, and just neuromuscular disorders, intellectual disabilities, torticollis. So the common neuromuscular disorder includes like Duchenne muscular dystrophy, spinal muscular atrophy, and the common intellectual disability was um, Down syndrome. We really practiced on how to write goals 
and make it specific for different settings like for school or for kids with disabilities knowing what stage of the disorder the child is in and like the different progressions of different disorders so that will help us um, determine our interventions and treatments for them and as for neuro we had a big midterm as well I mean this was it wasn't that big if you think about it it was just the whole textbook but no seriously it, it was the whole textbook so there was a ton of information and we just covered everything so the new stuff we covered include like cranial nerves and uh, cerebrum and the associated pathologies with it uh, let me think I can't even remember now yeah my brain is still fried for neuro we also have a motor learning project which, which seems pretty interesting uh, we each had to pick a new skill that we don't know how to do and document and to see if we pro to see how we progress. All right, so for our motor project, I'm going to attempt to do the human flag. And hey, Ryan, what are you going to try? Some unicycling. Dude, it's going to be hard, but <laughs> we're going to show you guys our first attempts. Let's go over there. And as for a clinic, I went to a children's center, which was basically a hospital for kids with disabilities. And they also had a preschool there. So we went over and we took the kids through, the preschool kids through like a whole treatment, uh, trying to work on their gait, work on just different uh, weaknesses. And we played on the playground. And I was actually pretty tired. It was, it was pretty hard playing with kids. In the afternoon, we went to the hospital, the children's center. And I, I treated a kid with arthrogryposis, which was a interesting diagnosis. It was basically, they were basically born with uh, contracted joints. So their joints were very stiff and they were also hyperextended. Their limbs were hyperextended. And because their joints couldn't move, their muscles are very atrophied. So their uh, arms and legs were literally like this, this thin. She was only five years old and I had to be very gentle. Her whole body was very fragile, so so I just um, I still I tried to sit her up, just working on sitting tolerance. Well, this will conclude the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.